Okay. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Holly Smith and I'm a truck driver's wife. Today we are going to be discussing how to get to six figures in the trucking industry and how to do it very quickly. I'm talking six months or less, okay? Because what I'm going to tell you is the knowledge that we gain from six years, and I'm going to dumb it down into about 15 minutes, and in the, in the next 15 minutes, you should be able to understand exactly how to get six figures in your business within six months, okay? Here we go. So let's say you're just starting out. We have a lot of these comments where people are just starting out in the industry. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what to do. Um, here's our first piece of advice. Our first piece of advice is do not go with a lease to own program at a company. Just go straight company driving. When you do that, you allow yourself to save up money and not focus on the maintenance for a company's truck. Because when you're a company driver, you don't pay for any maintenance. You don't have any overhead at all. You just make your paychecks. So you can make really good paychecks, stay out for the three weeks they want you to stay out for, and bank that money so that you can go get your own truck. You, your goal is to own your own truck from a private dealership. So that's the main goal. If your credit's not that great, go to a private lease program. So not like a program with a company, but just a private lease company that can lease you a truck without a credit check. That will allow you to be able to have your own truck so that you can go to any company you wanna to go to and, and still be paying off a vehicle, still be paying off an asset, because that asset will get paid off really quickly and you'll have it to either sell, trade in, or add another truck. Okay, or just have a paid off truck because you can make more money that way. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is how to get there. The first thing I'm going to say is, well, <laughs> when you start doing a company driving position, you're going to want to find a company that fits your needs. So let's say you train at any company you want to train at or go to a private training school. You're going to want to find a company that fits your needs. What do you need? Do you want to go to college? There are companies that can provide that. They can provide free schooling. Or do you want to just make as much money as possible? Then you might want to go more specialized, go into open debt, go flatbed. That will allow you to make a lot more per mile, which will allow you to save up more money more quickly. Um, do you want to be so specialized that you go into a certain type of industry? like the oil fields. Well, in that case, you need to go tanker. So just decide in your heart what it is that you want to do. Do you like running at night? Do you like night schedules? Okay, well then maybe you like reefer or van. Maybe you really want to have something so insulated that the that it never drops in freight. That's going to be that's going to be reefer. Um, so it just depends on what you enjoy. So when you're picking a company, make sure they fit your needs and your goals. There's so many out there. You shop around. Find one that works for you and your family. Make sure they have generous home time if that's what you're looking for. Make sure they've got trucks with refrigerators and microwaves if that's what you're looking for, APUs. Whatever it is that's going to fit your goals. Um, the next thing that I'll say is if you're a young couple and you don't have a career, the other one doesn't have a career back at home or kids, just get on the road together. It's so much fun. I can do a whole video about how to be a woman on the road. It's not that hard. It's super, 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 super fun. It's a great way to make memories when you're just starting out and see the world or see the country. I have seen every uh, state of the 48 states because I decided to go on the road with my husband and we had a blast. I got pregnant on the road. My six month belly was touching the steering wheel by the end of it because I started, I had just gotten my CDL and a couple weeks later I got pregnant. So um, I drove pregnant. I was the I was I did the night shift. I liked driving at night. My husband preferred it because I was I was such an inexperienced driver that he's like, you stay you know, where there are no other cars that you can hit or that can hit you. Um, you know, I preferred it that way. I didn't mind driving at night. I preferred that to the daytime. I did not like driving in traffic. So um, I drove at night. I had a six month pregnant belly there at the end and my belly was hitting the steering wheel and I was like, babe, it's time to go home. So I went home. Um, and 
and we've still been trucking. We've still been in this industry. And so it was such a great way to start out our life together. And now it's a great way to provide a six figure income for our family and our little babies. And now we're working so hard and hustling so hard because we're going home. I mean, we're bringing my husband off the road. That's our next step. And so I want people to get to where we're at so much faster than we got here because we got here through a lot of trial and error and a lot of mistakes. And you can get here just by watching this video and doing the steps that we give you. So make sure that you really pay attention because this is really truly years of experience that you can get in just a couple minutes. So that's what I would say if you're just starting out, go company, save your money, go get a private dealership truck. That way that you're paying something off that's yours, you take anywhere you want. Uh, maintenance, don't let it be scary. Be very disciplined about keeping a maintenance account. Don't rely on companies to fund the maintenance. You fund the maintenance. You keep 15 cents a mile away from maintenance or whatever it is you deem necessary. But make sure that you keep it away from the family finances. Keep it away from even you if you've got problems with it. Whatever spouse is better at managing money, make sure they're in charge of the maintenance money. Keep it secure. Keep it precious to you because it will make sure that you're always above and not behind. Okay, because if you get behind on a truck payment because you had to pay for maintenance that month, um, that can kind of derail you really early on. So prioritize saving money for maintenance. The other thing I would say as you're just starting out is prioritize your CSA score, prioritize safety. When in doubt, be safe. I'd rather you be slow and safe than fast and in trouble because what I'm gonna tell you is this, if you go, if you let your safety score go off the rails, Okay, um, you're not going to be able to get contracted to any company. Even when you own your own truck, they won't be able to hire you on and you can run under their authority numbers and with their freight. They won't be able to do that if you have a bad CSA score. So we've been at a ton of companies and we've got a bad track record about that because we've tried so many different ones to fit our family. Um, but my husband always had an excellent CSA score and he was always very kind and professional. And so because of that, he got in any door he wanted because he had a great safety score um, and he was really easy to work with. And so I always recommend just prioritizing safety, get really good at your job and stay on top of it. Do not let anything slip in your hours, in your maintenance, in your um, pre-trips, anything like that. If you are at a company that doesn't prioritize trailer maintenance, that can tank your CSA score. We had a company like that that wouldn't prioritize trailer maintenance, and if you're a company driver, maybe they're not prioritizing truck maintenance. That can come back on your CSA score and prevent you from being able to get hired at places. We failed a couple inspections because of our company that we were contracting at trailer they would not fix it. We we talked to them and talked to them. They wouldn't fix it. They wouldn't fix problems on the truck. It was their truck. And so because of that, um, he had a he had a rough CSA score there for a while. And it hindered us from being able to go to certain places. We had to wait a few months to let those numbers drop and let those um, some of the things on that score fall off. And so that was... It, it felt really ridiculous to us because I was like, you are a great driver. You haven't had any moving violations, but because the company itself didn't prioritize maintenance, it was a problem. So make sure that they do that. And if they don't, find somebody else. You wanna work at a company where it is properly managed. That will bless you and your family. Um, own your own truck. If given the option, when you're looking for companies, look for a company that you can self-dispatch at. When you self-dispatch, you control your money. Control your money. Self-dispatch, okay? Um, make sure you're really great at fuel utilization, especially as you own your own truck. Practice as a company driver if they let you. They probably won't let you. Maybe they'll tell you exactly where to fuel and what to fuel. But if they let you practice fuel utilization, how much am I gonna spend here versus if I can only fuel up 60 gallons here, I can get across the state line and I can get full tanks over there for 30 cents less. Do that. My husband has always done those kind of things. He's always paid a lot of attention to fuel utilization and it's why we've been able to protect our bottom line even in inflation, even in a time where uh, fuel has not been favorable to us, right? Fuel prices have gone up, but we have managed to keep our bottom line steady because he is so good and he watches his fuel. So um, the next thing I'll say is if you have a spouse at home, if you're like in a situation where your spouse or partner can't come with you and they're at home, they've got kids, you've got kids, school age, babies, whatever it is, 
you guys need to sit down and have a goal. And this is for couples who are on the road too, because when you have a goal, then your money has a place to be instead of at a hotel or eating out five days a week five nights a week, right? So make sure that you have a goal. Every single fiscal quarter, have a goal for your business. Even if you're a company driver, have a goal for saving. Have a goal, make a place for your money. Open up a second bank account, open up a savings account, open up a money market account, some place your money can go, you are not gonna touch it so that it can be there for maintenance, for owning your own truck, getting your own trailer, whatever it is, okay? But have a goal and then say, okay, in this next year or in this next six months or in this next three months, we wanna have the down payment for a new truck or we wanna have the down payment for a trailer, we wanna have the money for a trailer outright. When you can go cash, go cash. Truck prices and trailer prices just plummeted because everyone is fleeing this industry as fast as they can because fuel prices scared them and they got trucks during inflation and so they they can't the fuel prices and what people are paying for freight is not paying for um the overhead and so there's a lot of people leaving the industry right now so we can be picking up trucks really cheap you want to be able to do that but to be able to do that you've got to be really disciplined and save that money do not spend it okay those truck stops are designed to make you spend all that extra money be disciplined okay that leads me to my next point eat in your truck Take an Instant Pot, take a hot plate, take a crock pot, take a coffee maker, a microwave, a fridge, whatever you gotta do, invest in your quality of life on the truck because one, it's gonna make you feel more like you're at home when you're able to make coffee in your truck instead of having to walk inside in the morning if that's something that matters to you, right? And then two, you're gonna save thousands of dollars a month if you will just eat on your truck. Uh, okay, so I'm not saying never go out to eat. I prioritize my husband. I'm like, hey, you need to go inside and get a steak tonight. You need to go have a real meal. Like, you know, don't don't just warm up something in the microwave. Don't just make something small. Like, go sit down and have someone cook for you, especially if he's been out for a while. So at least a couple times a week, I'm like, hey, you need to go do that. But we're at the place where we can do that. So back in the day, we weren't at that place and we cooked on the truck all the time. And that really saved our bottom line. That saved us financially in general. It helped us eat. We couldn't even afford to go out to eat if we wanted to every night. And so um, I would cook on the road and it was fun. We had a great time. So especially if you're a young couple, cook on the road, save your money. If you do this right and you spend a couple years on the road together and you don't have very many expenses, you've got a phone bill and maybe some medical insurance or you know whatever it is that you've got, um, you know, you're able to save all that money. You could get a house out, paid outright. You could have a house paid for it, the title deed to it by the time you're done, if you do this right. Okay, so really focus in, really be disciplined in this time. Um, another thing that I will say is make sure the whole family's on board, especially if you have kids. Make sure they understand how long you're gonna be out for, what you're doing this for, make, give them goals. Okay, when you come home, have a family fun day, have a couple family fun days. Okay, when dad's home, we order pizza. When dad's home, we go to the zoo. When dad's home, we go to the pool. We, we go out on the lake. Whatever it is that your family enjoys doing together, make sure it's a party, okay? Give your kids something to look forward to. Make them a part of this because whether you like it or not, they already are a part of this. They already are a part of this, okay? They are sacrificing time with their dad so that you can provide a better life for them and a future. So be responsible with this time. Do not sacrifice your time away from your children without it producing a harvest, without it producing fruit in your life, okay? Because you don't wanna just have a job to have a job and make ends meet and then and go home and see your kids once a month. Because if that's the case, you could just make ends meet at home somewhere. You could find a different job. But do this and sacrifice the home time if you're willing to build something that's gonna be something for your kids. Build generational wealth, and this industry can make you do it. That's what we're doing with this industry. This is easily a seven-figure business, eight-figure business within just a couple of years if you do it right. And if you're very disciplined and you're very responsible and you get great drivers. So um, all that being said, I would say, guys, when you're out on the road, your wife is at home. She is taking care of everything. When you come home, do not interrupt her schedule. Do not interrupt her routine. You slip into her and the kids' lives. You don't come in and say, I don't like this and you shouldn't be doing that. And are they going there again? No, you can be a parent, but don't interrupt their routine. That's their survival when you're gone. 
as a single parent or as a stay-at-home parent when the other parents on the road you know you have ways and things of doing like a routine ways of doing and being right that helps you survive by yourself and so when your spouse comes in and and criticizes those things or tries to change them or give the kids punishments and then leaves for three weeks you got to talk about that stuff together okay because that's not being honoring to your spouse that's not being honoring to the person who is taking care of your children, who's taking care of your family and your house, okay? That's not kind. And, and quite frankly, you wouldn't want that treatment. You wouldn't want her to come on your truck and say, you shouldn't be running your hours like that. You shouldn't be getting fueled there. I don't know why you're getting that donut this morning. You really should be, you don't want that in your world. Don't do that to her. Don't do that to her or him if you're a woman on the road. Okay, so don't interrupt the routine, slip into it. And wives, spouses, people who they're coming home to, be somebody they're excited to come home to. Smell nice, look nice, have nice food. Okay, they've been on the road. Some of those creature comforts you get every single day, they have sacrificed for your family. So make sure when they come home, they get treated like kings. I make sure that when my husband is home, I look like a million bucks, okay? He came, he tried to surprise me the other day and said, um, you know, I was all dressed all super nice. He had turned his location off. We have Life360, I always know where he's at. And he had turned it off, So, and he was kind of close to home, so I knew he, had, he was just gonna deadhead up to the house. And so I got all dressed, the house was clean, the kids looked nice. <laughs> and uh, he came home and he was like, surprise! And I was like, oh, hi honey, here's a drink. And he was like, you knew I was coming? And I was like, do you think I look like this all the time? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, I don't. <laughs> I look like this when you're coming home. You know, do that. Have those moments for them so that they feel special and feel honored. When you honor each other, it is brings such power and such intimacy into your marriage and into your relationship. And your children can feel the love there. So do that for each other. Um, and the last thing I'll say, I really highly recommend as a dad, especially if you've got kids that have their own phones, or even if you've got little babies, FaceTime them as often as you can. Call them as often as you can. Call your kids who are in school. Call your middle schoolers. Call your high schoolers. Talk to them. Walk them through homework. Ask them about their boyfriends or their day or their clubs or their sports. Okay, don't just call your spouse and talk to them through the speaker. Call them. Invest in a relationship with them. You don't have to sacrifice a relationship with your children at any age, at any point, just because you're on the road, okay? And my three-year-old has a thriving relationship with her daddy. He calls her every single night for prayer. She's on the phone, he's on the phone with us half the day, and he just sits and listens to her play puzzles with me and homeschool and all the things because he invests in our home life even when he's gone. He enjoys being with our family. And so that means so much to her. And she'll say like, hey, why, why haven't we talked to daddy? Where's daddy? And I'm like, hey, he's strapping a load. Chill out, okay? Like we can't talk to him right now. Um, make that a priority. Uh, so that's all the things that I would say right now. That's kind of just an overview of best practices of how to get to six figures and maintain it really easily. Um, I know that it may seem like we didn't say a lot, but honestly, it's very simple. You just get your own truck, get in the industry, you really, this side of the industry you really enjoy, and be disciplined. Invest in those three weeks. Maintain those three weeks until you get to your next goal, okay? And when you're home, make it fun. Because your family can only sustain this is when you're home, it's fun. Fun, people are always at their best when they're having fun. If you don't make it fun when you're home, you're just some dude that provides the mortgage. Like you're just a guy. But if you come home and you invest in your family and you love on them, if you spend your time on the road educating yourself and hanging out with your family over the phone instead of watching movies and playing video games, you're gonna have a much more active life, much more full life on the road than if you were just like, I'll see you in a couple weeks and I'll maybe talk to you 20 minutes at night. As you can and as your family schedule allows, call them, call them, call them, call them, call them. It makes a huge difference in how involved you are in your actual life. That truck is not your life. That truck is supposed to get you to a better life with your family. And it's going to be pointless if you drive for 15 years, you build up a great fleet, you get to come home, and you don't recognize the people living in your house. Don't do that, okay? Finally, my last piece of advice is love Jesus. We did this industry before and after we started really walking with the Lord and reading the Word of God, and it changed our situation. It changed our business when we started tithing 
and giving, sowing seed into the kingdom of God, God produces a harvest on that. It changed our situation when my husband started listening to sermons instead of listening to podcasts. Okay. It changed our situation when we got into the word of God. And so I can't stress that enough. Jesus loves you. He is coming after you today. I'm actually the leader of a ministry. And, and he said, I want you to stop everything tonight. Don't do any ministry stuff. I want you to talk about trekking and minister to people in this industry because I love them. Okay. You're valued. You're chosen. God loves you. And he just, he sees you right where you're at. And the most important thing to remember is he can get you out of that truck. He can get you out of this situation and into a better one. He's got a call on your life that's a big one. And it is not just this truck. You are not just a truck driver. You're not just a truck driver's wife. You guys have a call from God. Answer it. Say, God, what is it that you want me to do? Accept Jesus into your heart. Get filled with the Holy Spirit and change your life. Change your kids' lives. The word says the children of the righteous are blessed. They're called blessed. Their parents are generous and they are called blessed. They ne- they never go hungry. They never want for anything. Psalms 37 tells us all about how the people of God are always protected. Okay? So if you want any advice for being able to survive and thrive in life, in trucking or in anything, I can't tell you all this stuff and not tell you about Jesus because that's really how we did it. Jesus taught us all these other things. So it begins and ends with the Lord. Uh, Thank you for watching. If you have more trucking questions or more questions about the Lord, please drop them in the comments. I want to hear them because I want to answer them. I'm very passionate about helping truck drivers live financially free because this is an industry where you can do it very, very quickly. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for watching. And again, I'm a truck driver's wife. Until next time, I'm Holly. Bye-bye.